Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Adam crosses a line with Sharon and Tucker pays him a visit as a result. Lily enters the Chancellor estate after Devin fails to hear her knock. They talk business and she believes the setting stimulates him. Devin explains that Tucker and Ashley are getting married there. She advises them to put away the breakables if all the Abbots arrive. Lily believes that having the wedding there makes a statement, but she's not sure what it is. Devin points out that it's Abby's mother and father, and they're not being married at the Abbott mansion. He's confident they'll get through it without incident, but he has some reservations. Devin believes Tucker is attempting to keep the peace by discussing Ashley's grudge. He asked if I wanted to be his best man, and I said yes. Lily is taken aback by this. Devin will never completely trust him, but he is willing to give him a chance. He laments the fact that Abby is caught in the middle of her family's quarrel. He's not sure how he'll forgive any of them if she gets caught up in the consequences. Abby tells Ashley they need to chat at the GCAC. Ashley assures her that she wishes to put an end to the rivalry. Can you actually accept that Diane is a part of Jack's life and Jabot? Abby asks. Ashley has her own great ambitions. Abby feels it sounds like she's giving up, which she never does. Ashley assures us that her motives are sincere. Abby can't shake the idea that this switch represents a new strategy. Ashley has doubts about Abby's honesty. Abby still can't believe she's going to let go of her rage and hatred. Ashley claims she has done everything she can to defend her family's business. She hasn't handled it well, but she's determined to mend her relationships. She's only requesting a chance. Ashley swears she'll get on with her life and move on. I'm committed to mending things with our family. Sharon is welcomed into Adam's residence. She wishes to speak with a dustus about office space. Sharon claims Victor gave them a room at Newman, but she believes they should have their own space. Adam concurs. Sharon has discovered some opportunities on the other side of town. Adam tells her, whatever you think is best. She is concerned by this acquiescence. Adam is refusing to talk. Is there something you need to tell me? Sharon asks. Sharon presses him to discuss what is bothering him. Adam argues that whenever he even hints that he still cares about her, Sally looks at him pityingly. He realizes he must let it go, but it feels like a mistake because she brings out the best in him. Sharon tells him he's a better guy than he used to be, but that wasn't Sally's fault. She simply saw it in him. She warns him not to cling to a love that is doomed. Adam sighs, knowing that he and Sally are meant to be together. She's only with Nick because she believes he's a safer option. Sharon reminds him that he has no say over what is in Sally's or Nick's hearts. Sharon is still Nick's one true love, according to Adam. That is something he should embrace. Exasperated, Sharon wonders whether that's how he views her and Nick and how they'll function together. How about you? She and Nick have been through hell and are ready to move on. Adam reminds Sharon that just because he's pointing out the obvious doesn't imply he wants to derail their collaboration. Sharon contends that he must remove himself of his delusions. She and Nick have a bond because of their children and past, but that doesn't guarantee they'll ever be romantically involved. Adam maintains that Nick's emotions were clear the night Sally lost the baby, and his primary concern was Sharon. He adores you. He'll always be in love with you. Sharon orders him to stop. Adam maintains that while the love may be dormant, it will never die. Don't just throw it away or avoid it. Sharon warns Adam that he has crossed a line. She's not going to allow him use her to create a schism between Nick and Sally. I'm not going to be used as a pawn in your game. Adam expresses regret. He values her too much to try to manipulate her. Sharon believes he has a right to his sentiments, but if they interfere with the partnership, it will be an issue. It's time for them to move on Tucker and concentrate on Phyllis in society life. that scandals come and go, and that it's all part of the game. Phyllis has evidence, and she is willing to go public with his corporation, covering up statutory rape. She's in charge right now, and she wants Carson, right now. Tucker knows what she's referring about, but it has nothing to do with him. Phyllis claims he was still the commander of the ship, and the emails prove it. Do you want this hanging over your head moving forward? Tucker smiles and says, You do what you have to do, Phyllis. Phyllis does not want things to get out of hand and urges him not to underestimate her. 
Tucker is curious as to what she and Christine were discussing before. It appears to him that he is not in danger. Tucker is informed by Phyllis that her trial date has been set. That implies it's game on for both her defense and him. She wonders what Ashley would think of having his name dragged through the mud. This is a game changer, and you know it. Tucker informs her that our deal is off. Phyllis asks Daniel if he's sure that Ashley will drop him like a hot potato. She begs him to keep their agreement. She has the power to change his life. You can't touch me, Phyllis, Tucker says as he walks away. Daniel approaches his mother, who is taken aback. Tucker, Daniel wants to know why Phyllis was talking to the snake. Phyllis claims they have greater issues. Christine is chasing Summer. Daniel expected this to happen. Trying to protect us. He snarls. How did it turn out? Do you ever give up? Lily tells Devin at the Chancellor residence that things are going well between her and Daniel and that they had a painting night. He's relieved she's moved on from Billy. There are no games with Daniel, according to Lily. She's delighted for him and Abby. They raise a glass to simplicity and pleasure. When Tucker arrives to Adam's house, Sharon flees. Tucker inquires about the company's restructuring. Let me guess, Adam grins, you talk to Phyllis. Tucker believes she discovered some material in some old McCall emails. Playing along, Adam inquires, what kind? Tucker responds, the kind that could potentially cause me a bit of trouble if exposed. What does she have, Adam? He inquires. This and that, Adam grumbles. An email or two, possibly more. Tucker is curious as to what's in it for him. Adam wants to go right to the point. Tucker has an idea, a win-win situation. If he's willing to hear, Adam is willing to listen for a minute but isn't easily persuaded. He'll have to persuade him that his offer is worth more than that. More, Adam's true motivation for hiring Phyllis is exposed. I'm a simple man, as you know, Tucker continues, and I'm just here to offer a simple deal. He claims to be able to make things happen and asks Adam what he wants. Keep Phyllis out of jail, Adam responds. Tucker inquires as to why. Release the witness Carson to Phyllis and we're good, Adam says. He encourages him to think about it and get back to him as soon as possible. Phyllis informs Daniel that he has offered her an offer at society. If she pleads guilty, she will abandon Summer. Do it, Daniel exclaims. Simply do it. She may set things right by accepting responsibility for her actions. Phyllis contends that it is not so straightforward. There are variables. Daniel questions whether she really wants to see Summer arrested for something she committed. Phyllis insists that there must be another way, but Daniel scoffs. Please, Mom. Just do the right thing once in a while. More, Nate the Snake's next measured move. Phyllis informs Daniel that he does not know Christine as well as she does. She's merely offering a bargain to escape going to prison. She's terrified because Heather has fortified her defenses. She can defend Summer while also escaping. Daniel believes Tucker is involved in this. He questions her willingness to risk Summer's future and freedom. You have not learned from the past, he rages. Phyllis rages that she has always attempted to protect her children. Daniel raises his hands and says, you haven't changed at all. He begs her once more to take the terrible bargain and start making amends. Abby begs her mother to make peace with Uncle Jack at the GCAC. Ashley gives a nod. She doesn't want their wedding to be a fight. She'll strive to reconcile with Jack so that they can be a family again. Abby believes in her mother and reminds her that she deserves to be happy. Ashley advises that she cannot do this alone. Jack has to meet her halfway and he despises Tucker as well. She wants Abby to contact her uncle and try to persuade him to attend the wedding. Abby promises to make an effort. They hold hands. More, Diane's What's scheme wrong? will fail. Lily Spoiler. asks Daniel as he joins her in the park. Daniel tells her about the bargain Christine made with Phyllis for summer. He complains that everything is always about her. Lily apologizes. When she's like this, Daniel can't even look at her. Summer's life is on the line and their mother needs time to reflect. Lily knows he'll go to any length to protect Summer. Daniel will not let his sister's destiny be determined by their mother's behavior. It's past time for him to take action, even if it means defying his own mother. Sharon approaches Phyllis in society and suggests that they collaborate. Might? Phyllis inquires. Sharon points out that it is contingent on the outcome of her trial. No one believes I can beat this, do they, says Phyllis. 
Sharon has a feeling she has something up her sleeve. Yes, Phyllis says with a smile. I always have. Sharon believes it is past time for her to face the consequences. It's time for her to take a long, hard look in the mirror. Phyllis scoffs at her being so judgmental in her remarks. Sharon feels she's bristling because she knows taking responsibility is the correct thing to do. Phyllis volleys that Sharon is once again caught between Adam and Nick. Does this ring familiar? Sharon will not allow Phyllis to derail their plans. Adam approaches them and says, we can make this work. Phyllis snarks, yeah, it's going great so far. At home, Abby informs Devin that her mother wishes to reconcile with Uncle Jack. She's almost there with her trust. She's determined to persuade Jack to attend the wedding. More, Ashley and Tucker's engagement has fallen through. Daniel laments in the park that his mother may be selfish at the most inconvenient moments. Lily believes it is unjust to both him and Summer. She's producing all of this tension while ignoring the repercussions. Daniel concurs. He can't stand by and watch Summer suffer as a result of Phyllis' decisions. He inquires as to if Lily has any suggestions. More. Adam has the ammunition to take down Spoiler. Ashley tells Tucker at the Abbott house that she told Abby an omission lie. They must safeguard the company. Tucker claims they can't trust Phyllis any longer. She's become a liability rather than an asset. How so? Ashley inquires. Tucker encourages her not to worry and hugs her, saying, Nothing I can't handle.